What's up, Spice Warriors? It's Dune Bro, and welcome to my counselor's guide for Dune Spice Wars. In this video, we're going to be going through each of the houses, and I'm going to give you my recommendations on the two counselors that you should choose if you're going to be playing the game. And for some of them, I'll give you a few different options in case you've got some different routes that you want to enjoy. Now, if you are into Dune Spice Wars, I've got some guides on my channel. I've got brand new beginner's guides and opening guides for that newest House Vernius. And I'm also going to be covering all the other factions over time. So smash that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and leave me a comment so we can grow the channel. Let's dig into this, starting off with the Atreides. House Atreides, a faction I would recommend if you were brand new to the game, a great beginner civilization to start with. Very, uh, very standard. Let's talk about the counselors that I would choose for Atreides. So for House Atreides, I think your best options are going to be Lady Jessica, because she can spend influence to force a truce. This is super uh, massive, especially in the later stages of the game. If you, I mean, having to betray somebody in truce has a huge cost to it. Not to mention, it also makes it so a faction betraying a truce with House Atreides loses 50 more land strats. So if you don't have maybe you've got to fight on multiple fronts or even you've got a, a an attack coming that you're not ready to defend you can force a truce on them and it can can buy you some time and certainly make it very costly for the enemy to have to attack you so for this reason highly rec recommend this one also atreides treaties have no authority upkeep so it's in your interest to make a bunch of trees with different players you're gonna get a lot of benefits and it's not going to cost you any authority so that's going to be lady jessica and then the second one that I would recommend, it's not going to be Young Paul Trades. It's going to be Thufur uh, Hawat. Now, I would say there's a little bit of options you can do here. So let's talk about this one first. This makes it so two agents have one additional trait. So that's going to be the, the agents you're recruiting in the espionage panel. They have traits and it's going to be a little bit of RNG, but they get an additional one, which is going to be a nice buff to you. And you can hasten mission progress and construct, construction of village buildings at the cost of Solari. So typically you have a pretty big economy with the Atreides and you can speed things up with this quite nicely. It's a little more challenging to use this. I'd say if you're brand new, you wanna make it a little easier, go with the one marked easy. And with uh, Dr. Yua, you produce an additional knowledge and your military units are gonna have additional health and, and, and regen. So you can't go wrong with these two. But if you want to do a little more advanced, maybe go for the outside, go for Hawat and Lady Jessica, but definitely would recommend having Lady Jessica in your arsenal. Well, let's move on to the Harkonnens, the Baron himself. Okay, now the Harkonnens, I think, have maybe the most diverse counselor options out here. I think there's a few different combos you can try, and let's talk about them. So, we'll start with maybe one of my favorites. If you want to go like super assassination heavy, the Harkonnens are maybe the best faction for doing so. You're going to want to go with the far right uh, counselors. So if you go with Phaedratha, you can use corruption on Landsrad resolutions. Those are those votings that come up, causing them to lose Landsrad standing if they get elected. And so that's really good. You can tank somebody's Landsrad standing. It's going to end up having negative repercussions on their economy throughout. It's going to be very good to do, but also Oppression is a big thing with this faction. You're using oppression all the time. While at least one village is under oppression, you get 20% more influence and 100% or agent recruitment speed. You're going to need those if you're going for assassination. And for me, I literally always have something being oppressed when I'm playing Harkonnen. So you're going to be getting this bonus all the time, especially uh, if you build the Office of the Order building that makes it constantly oppressed. This is going to be just easy money on the table. But the far right here, you've got Peter DeVries. Each sacrificed agent permanently reduces the mission cost. So if you're going for a bunch of assassination missions, you're going for infiltration cells, you're going to sacrifice some agents, not to mention you'll get some brainwashed agents eventually and sacrifice them. It's going to make it cheaper for you to get these and you get additional Solari bat when you sacrifice them. So these two are going to be amazing for, for an assassination route. Now, if maybe you don't want to go assassination, I would say out of the gate, these two are very nice. Uh, for this one, villages under oppression construct buildings 200% faster and it gain 50 Solari upon killing rebels. And you always got these rebels pop it up. As you're killing them, you're getting free money. 
I really like this counselor. I've used this a lot. Probably most of the time, these are the two that I choose. And then if you really want to go for something extra crazy, maybe you're going, you want to go military dominance, which is good and bad. It's very hard to outright win with military dominance. You can try working in the heavy hand units in region uh, with an active Harkonnen operation. They get plus one armor and units recruit faster. So if you want to go all out military conquest, maybe you're actually going to want this one. But my favorite is probably going for these two. And if you want to go for assassination, going to be going with the two on the far right. Well, let's get into the smugglers. Okay, so with the smugglers, you've got a few different options here and they have maybe some of the weirdest counselors, I would say. I had a, a tough time trying to decide which two were my favorite, and maybe it's still a little bit up for grabs. But the ones that stand out to me is going to be going with the first one here, which is going to be Heir of the Underworld. Underworld Headquarters, which is that special headquarter you get as the smugglers that you can build in enemy villages. Uh, if they have no empty extension slots, meaning you've built them up, they produce plus five Solari per neighboring underworld headquarters so you spam these headquarters around that's gonna be additional salary for you but even more importantly that money's great underworld headquarters have plus one extension slot so you can really get some additional buildings in those underworld headquarters and you're gonna get more salary for it as you uh, build next to neighboring the second one being uh the linger butte the water merchant so with the water merchant you get plus 10 water right out of the gate that's super, super helpful. Not to mention supply on Arrakis. Always good to have water. Unlocks the water network and water sellers, sellers extensions in the Underworld headquarters. And if you look at this, if you think of if you paired this with that first counselor that gives you more extensions with the water network, you get plus three water. It's going to be nice. Water seller, you get plus 15 Solari and the host receives plus three water. So just really all around a nice counselor to have. This one's really weird. You have to basically trade Intel to other players in the game, and they're probably not gonna accept it because they're gonna know you're using this uh, in order to uh, get Intel on those factions. And then you produce influence per information level. Mm, I don't love this one. I think this one's really weird to use. Maybe one of my least favorite counselors, honestly, out there. And then lastly, villages without any smugglers, regions and the neighbors uh, gain sieges take 100% longer and 20% more resource production and then you get authority back if you lose it. So if you want to go for like a base across the map, forward base, maybe this would be a good one, but that's such a niche scenario. Maybe your, your guns blazing, conquest, want to try that out. But overall, I would recommend the first two counselors for the smugglers. Moving on to the Fremen. These ones have changed up a little bit here. Uh, you've got some options here, of course, um, but let's talk about my two favorite. I'm going to say Mother Ramalo and Stilgar are going to be my two favorite counselors for the Fremen. Now, with Mother Ramalo, you can incite rebellion on land strata resolutions, those votings that come up, causing rebellions in enemy villages if it passes. So if, if they vote on this resolution, you put that rebellion on it, they're all going to get rebels attacking in their bases, and that can cripple an enemy economy. Not to mention, if you pair this with the Awaken the People mission, they can have two rebellions go in their base. You think if they're at the front attacking you or something, they've got all this going on, cut off spice, water, whatever it might be. Very, very nice. It does cost authority, so you don't want to use it right at the beginning, but I like it. And then you're also getting intel per each harvest team. So very nice counselor. I like that one a lot. And then you got Stilgar. Revealed sieges, uh, all of them at the start of the game, and the allied sieges cost 50% less authority. And as you get those, uh, become allied with those sieges, there's going to be such nice bonuses that you can build inside of those sieges because you can upgrade them, you can get additional thumpers, you can upgrade your economy, your military power, lots of nice stuff. So these two, very, very good counselors. Now, if you want to spice it up, you've got this counselor, which gives you basically free water uh, you get plus one per empty building slots and then if a, a village has at least 12 water it gives a three percent solari discount globally i think it's a little hard to get 12 water but it is possible and then there's Jameis, which is basically gains a 30 upon uh, liberating an enemy village so if you want to go super aggressive you're going to get authority each time you liberate a village. Um, and then military units outside of your territory, they inflict 10% more damage. And then you can trade authority for manpower. So this is definitely going to be, if you want to go super warpath heavy, a nice counselor. But these two would be the ones I recommend for the Fremen. Let's talk about House Carino, the Emperor. 
very easy option here with this. I would say you're going to go with Princess Irulan, and then you're going to want to go Irulan. You're going to want to go with uh, the All-Seeing Eye, Finring here on the right. Now, the reasons being, uh, with the first one, we have centralized industry. In each village, a single building can be constructed uh, one more time. So you can get two plastic factories. You can get two processing plants. That's going to be really, really massive. You can get a single village can be constructed one more time. So talk about building up that economy. Very, very nice, especially if you're going for a chome victory. And you can have plus two crew in each harvester. More resources. This is a super big uh, economic counselor. Highly recommend going with this option. And then for this last one, can investigate discoveries. Those are the points of interest out on the map. Uh, quick, More quickly everywhere, uh, no matter how many agents are on Arrakis. So you can just do this right out of the gate, start getting these discoveries that could be uh, some manpower, Solari, troops, authority, who knows what it might be. And then resolving any discoveries that way progresses an agent recruitment by one day. So you're going to get your agents faster. You're going to get these these uh, discoveries faster. Pick up on some of those, uh, those resources out on the map pretty, pretty quickly. So those can be the two that I would recommend. You can get some additional power for truce if you want to try to go the war route uh, with this one. And then you can also... This one makes every Carino vote placed on a resolution affected by an edict that counts double. So maybe if you really want to go for a governorship victory, you can try uh, using political supremacy. But in general, the first and last are going to be my options for House Carino. Moving on to House Ikaz. With this faction, your best options are going to be, for each sanctuary on the map, gain plus 15 solari the sanctuaries are those points that you build by surrounding uh with, with there he goes uh, the explanation cannot be attacked by other factions gains plus one authority production neighboring villages quirks are applied uh one more time you can build this sanctuary so you can do surrounded neutral villages that's how you get the sanctuaries with uh it's kind of like the deep desert for the fremen so gonna be some extra resources for you and then you have uh a few other options here i think my favorite i'm trying to remember it's going to be this. Oh, yeah, definitely the best one. Can use land threat immunity on a resolution. So this is going to make it so that y that you that the resolution cannot affect you. This can help you when governor shepherds get rid of things that you don't want them to vote on you for. And you get additional land threat upon building each of your masterpieces. So those are going to be my two favorite for uh, ECAS. You also have this option if you want to. Military units at max level. Uh, have no salary upkeep and they start with more experience. I actually wager if you don't want to worry about the sanctuaries because they're difficult You can go with these two right out of the gate are nice options Otherwise, I would say first and third probably gonna be the better options the last one don't mess with this one it, You have to abandon villages and then it's gonna refund authority. You're gonna be so busy doing these things It's very hard to, to get use out of this you get your masterpieces faster I've tried to make it work overall I think it's too difficult really to get too much value out of so I like the first and third counselors and last but not least our newest faction let's move on to house vernius the ixian civilization what are gonna be my two favorites well i've been playing this one a lot easily the last two my favorite for house vernius the reason being uh with this one your max influence increases by five per knowledge you're already stacking knowledge because it's what makes your military get stronger with those tethered drones so you're going to have more knowledge that's going to impact your influence and immediately gain 200 influence when entering a conflict. So you're going to get some extra votes should there a conflict arise and then you receive 30 land strad when an opponent uh, imposes conflict in any way. And you're spending land strad to get those analytical machines to build those neural networks. So you're going to need that. I think this is a nice counselor. And then you pair this with uh, Tessie Vernius. Information levels required for knowledge missions are lowered by one, which is nice because the analytical machines don't count as levels uh, in their infiltration. So it's, now it's one little bit easier to get. And while no development in progress, 100% of knowledge is turned into intel. So when you go to assassination, if you want to go for that, which I highly recommend, uh, that knowledge that you've been stacking, you're going to stop getting developments in the late stages of the game. You're going to keep getting intel and be able to afford to buy those assassins to keep that infiltration mission going not to mention if you're getting more knowledge that's also means you're getting more influence so a lot of that can add up uh, other options you can look at if you want to try some kind of expansion you could go for vernius which gives you uh cheaper cost to uh, expand nearby and your your furthest node is going to be an airfield 
I've used this one. I've used these two before. I think it's okay. And then this one is really hard to actually have the resources to be building twice in the asphalt at the same time. It's nice if you want to mix and move around some of your buildings uh, and you get one knowledge per district. In general, I think it's too hard. My favorite two are going to be the last two to the right. Okay, guys, with that, that's going to be my counselor guide for Dune Spice Wars. That's of this latest patch, so this could change later on. Let me know your thoughts down below if there's a favorite combination you like, and let me know why as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. Consider subscribing for some more Dune content, and I'll see you in the next one.